Welcome everybody. I'm Pastor Chris King with Northbridge Church in Frisco, Texas. And I want to welcome you this morning to this virtual experience in this live stream. Now, for Northbridge Church, we're here for those who are looking for more. By more, we mean more love, more truth, more transformation, and more success. But we don't define success by the way the world defines it. We define it how God defines it. Being productive for the kingdom of God. Living according to your purpose. So we just want to say welcome and I pray that you get some nuggets in today's message that will help you transform your life. Now, at Northbridge Church, we want you to be able to get your questions answered. So as you listen to the message, write down your questions and feel free. Text your question to 972-787-1761. That's 972-787-1761. And I will answer your questions following the message. Thank you again and enjoy. We would like to thank you for supporting our ministry and allowing us to share the word of God with you. Today, we invite you to become a partner in ministry with us. For your gift of $50 or more, we will send you a signed copy of Pastor Chris's amazing book, Black Jesus, White Jesus, A Search for a Colorless Christ. This book is a timeless exploration of Pastor Chris's personal journey of race and faith. Again, we thank you for becoming a partner today, and we look forward to continuing to share God's Word with you. Welcome, 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 welcome. It is now 1030 on the dot this wonderful Sunday morning. A glorious Sunday morning. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to thank everyone that's joining us this morning, joining us on Facebook Live, joining us on our website. Uh, give us a shout out. Let us know that you're joining. Wave, say hello, say good morning, Pastor. I want you to engage with me this morning. Let me know that you're out there. We have a dynamic message for you today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Pastor Chris King of Northbridge Church here in Frisco, Texas, the greatest uh, place to be in this great uh, country of ours. And I just want to welcome you this morning and just say, come on, experience more with me. Uh, with Northbridge Church, we are here for those who are looking for more. And by more, we mean more love, more truth, more transformation, and more success. And so welcome, 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 everyone. Give me a shout out. Good morning. I see you joining. Uh, Miss Cindy, I see you. Uh, Shalicia, I see you all that are coming in. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And I've been noticing that there are, there are people that join us. Uh, at times that don't give us a shout out. Come on, say hello. We don't bite. Uh, and, and if we did, we couldn't bite you now virtually anyway. So uh, come on, have a good time with us. I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about the word that he has me uh, delivering this morning. And I know that it's going to be a blessing to your life because it's, it's been a blessing to my life. And so I just want to invite you to engage with us. Good morning. Good morning. I see you joining. Uh, again, I'm Pastor Chris King with Northbridge Church. Good morning. We want you to experience more with us today. Uh, we have a dynamic message for you today, and we're so, so excited. So cute. Good. All right. All right. I see some new people. Welcome, 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 welcome. I see some old childhood friends and everything. So I want you really, uh, want you to really stay with me today in relation to the word that God is, is sharing. And I'm praying that this word really does something in your mind and in your heart so that, you know, as you meditate on it, as you internalize it, and as you uh, personalize it, I want you to really be able to apply it to your life uh, in all aspects of your life. And I want you to be able to recognize uh, and see and witness transformation in your life. Okay, so let us go to God in prayer and we're going to just dive right in. All right, Lord God, we honor you today. We thank you for this time. 
We thank you for the word that is being shared. God, use me in a mighty way. Lord God, uh, just speak specifically to those listeners and those people watching right now so that their lives will forever be transformed and never, ever be the same. God, we just pray for an experience in you today, wherever someone may be sitting, wherever someone may be watching or listening. And God, let this word not, uh, let it not fall on deaf ears, Lord God, but let it be carried out into the world and into the community so that it can change the landscape of our land. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to do this once again. Northbridge Church, y'all know how we do this. It doesn't make any sense for me to come and teach you the word if you're not ready to receive the word. So I'm going to ask you if you're ready to receive the word. And I can't hear you, but I can see you. So I want you to let me know by giving me a big, loud, all capital letters, yes. So Northbridge Church, y'all ready for the word? Say, yeah. If y'all ready for the word, say, oh yeah, and I just want to see you give me all caps, give me the, the excitement uh, for just being ready because sometimes when we come into the church, we come and we listen and we feel obligated, but this is a beautiful time when God is going to share his word with you specifically. And so that means that he loves you enough, he cares, cares about you enough to give you a specific word for your life. So we should be enthusiastic. We we should be excited. We should be encouraged. So let me know that you're ready. All right. All right. Good deal. Good deal. I see it. All right. So let us go to the scripture today. We're going to go to the book of Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to go from verses one through nine. Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. All right. All right. Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. And it reads, On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got into a boat and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Verse three. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. Verse six, but when the sun was up, they were scorched and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. He who has ears to hear. Let him hear. And this is the word of the Lord. I want to thank you again for tuning in for this particular message. Because with this message, I'm going to address the sower's mind. The sower's mind. Okay? We're talking about the sower's mind. Many people hear this passage of scripture and we hear the parable of the soils. We hear this passage of scripture and we focus on the types of soils. But today God wants me to focus on the actual subject matter of this parable. And the subject matter of this parable is the sower. And so we want to talk about the sower's mind. There are so many people in, uh, in life right now that are looking for some type of reprieve. They're expecting some type of benefit from all the work that they have put in. 
They've been working their tails off. They have been sacrificing. They have been working on jobs. They've been working in their relationships. They've been working with trying to be healthy. They've been working trying to improve financial status. They've been working all this time. They've been working on being good parents. They've been working on being good friends, working on being good spouses. And sometimes as they go through life, all the work that they put in seems to return nothing. And it's frustrating. And so some people get tired even in today's cultural landscape and social landscape with social unrest. We, we have people that are just tired of fighting. Some people have just, are just tired of being sick and tired. They're just tired. I've been fighting. Uh, Pastor, how many times do you have to turn the other cheek? Pastor, how long do I have to keep on fighting? Pastor, you say continue to sow love. Pastor, how long do I have to fight? And so we're tired of not getting the return of our sacrifice, not getting a return of our work. And so God says, today, I want you to address the sower's mind, okay? So here, the reason why I say this is the subject matter of this particular passage is because Jesus starts off talking about there was a sower. But even in my history of going to church and my history of sitting in the pews and in the chairs listening to messages, whenever I hear this passage preach, we always talk about the soils. And we talk about, you know, what kind of soil are you? Are you good ground? Are you stony ground? Are you thorny ground? Are you wayside ground? What kind of ground are you? And so we always talk about the soils, but God says, today I want you to talk about the sower. And he says, I want you to talk about the sower because this is where I've called you to be. I've called you to be a sower. And many of us are so focused on being a particular type of soil that we hadn't graduated to the call of being the, so the, the sower. So, so God says, I want you to focus on the sower, the sower's mind. So Jesus says, there was a sower. He says, behold, a sower. That's the subject. That is the primary subject of this text, the sower. So we have a lot of people focusing on being a particular type of soil. But God is saying, I don't want you to be soil laden. I want you to be to have a sower's mindset. But let me under, let me unpack this a little bit, because in this particular passage, we see Jesus giving this parable and he's talking about the sower having seed and he's sowing seed, but it's falling on different ground. And when you look further down in Matthew, in the same chapter, Jesus actually explains this parable and he's saying the seed is the word of God. And he's saying the soil is basically, the different types of soil is basically the heart condition of the, the, the recipient or the hearer. And so he's saying, he goes on to explain what type of condition your heart is in. And he's saying, the sower sows the word of God. And I said, okay, okay, God, you know, um, this, 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 here in particular, Jesus may be the sower in this particular parable, but what are we saying when we see the word of God? This is the generic word of God. So this particular passage is talking about your response to the initial offering of the word of God and how you receive it. Now, he's saying there are different levels of heart conditions that determine how you receive the word of God. But God's saying after so long, after you have had, uh, after the introduction to the word of God, after you've had some level of experience with the word of God, at some point, you should transition to not just being soil laden or soil focused, but being a sower. Why do you say this, Pastor? Because in Scripture, he often refers to us as sowers. He says he gives seed to the sower. We see in Scripture that he talks about what you reap, you what you sow, you shall also reap. What we see in Scripture, he, he talks about even Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. The Bible says that by now, you ought to be teachers. 
Okay, so that means that at some point there should be a level of progression. So today I'm talking to those people who have been had an introduction to the word of God over the course of your life. You are listening right now because you have some type of affinity to the word of God. But you're also listening because you understand that in that word, God has 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 purposed you to live for the kingdom of God and to reflect the love of God and so therefore you at this point if you had any experience with God you should be transitioning to being a sower so why does this matter many weeks ago I talked to, I, I did a message called choking for my consumption and and we talked about the consumption mindset and how God wants you to be a producer. He wants you to produce and he wants you to produce fruit. And so here we see this sower. And God is saying, God is saying, I want you to be the sower. At some point, you don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to have master, uh, masters of divinity. You don't have to have a PhD. You don't have to have apostle before your name, bishop or anything else. You don't have to have reverend or pastor before your name to be able to sow seed into someone else. So God says, people of God, it's time for us to move forward in being who I'm calling you to be in this moment. And that's sowers. Now, there's a difference. What do we, let, let's talk about this difference between uh, the sower and the, so, the soil. What is the sower's mind? First, we have to understand the identity of the sower. So we're understanding the identity of the sower. And as we understand the identity of the sower, we then can move on to understanding the activity of the sower. Okay, there's the identity of the sower, and then you have the activity of the sower. So let's look at, 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 at this, the identity of the sower. Many believers right now, I say, are soil laden. See, the soil, the soil is there, and the soil receives the seed. But the soil is just, it actually receives the seed, but the soil helps in producing fruit, but it, 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 the, the, the potential is not in the soil. The potential is not in the soil. And so the potential is actually in the seed. The fruit comes from the seed. The, the produ productivity comes from the seed. And so we are looking uh, as, as so being soil laden. We are getting a word from God. And when we don't understand the identity, uh, our identity as so sowers, what happens is we receive the word of God, but we want the benefits of of the seed without going through the process of germination, cultivation, and everything else that takes place to produce fruit. So God says, I need you to understand and have a sower's mind. And the first part of that is understanding the sower's identity. So when you understand the sower's identity, that's not just saying that you have the title of sower or the expectation of sower, but you also have the mentality of sower. So God says, I now am calling you to be sowers in title and expectation, but the disconnect is you have the title and there's an expectation of being a sower, but you don't have the mentality of the sower, so therefore you can never live up to the moment of the sower. The Bible in Proverbs chapter 30 says, the earth shakes when a pauper becomes a king or when a servant becomes a king. What it's saying is that when a, a when someone is elevated to a posi position of power and expectation of power, but their elevation in their position is not matched with the same elevation in mentality. The earth shakes when... You have now been called to be a sower and you have an expectation and you have a responsibility to sow seeds into seeds of life into someone else, into your community, into your family, into your relationship, into your life. And but your mentality is still with consuming and just receiving the benefit. I'll receive the seed, 
but I won't sow the seed. So God says there is a disconnect when you can't understand the identity of the sower. And many of us can't understand the identity of the sower because we have not developed the mentality of the sower. So, so here God is saying, I want you to focus on the sower's mind. I want you to focus on the sower's mind. So we have an expectation to sow. But that expectation must be matched with the mentality. So we have to understand the identity of the sower. And once we understand the identity of the sower, let's go on to understand the activity of this sower. See, if Christ is the sower in this particular par parable, we must, one, understand that we, we, we have to look at it to understand the characteristics of the sower because we're supposed to model ourselves after Christ. So therefore, let's look at the characteristics and let's look at the activity of this sower that we have going forward. Number one, this sower. A sower does what a sower is supposed to do. This sower does what a sower is supposed to do. What do you mean, pastor? The sower sows. No matter what's going on, the sower sows. So the sower wakes up in his day as a sower, and regardless of the ground that the sower is going on, all the sower sees is ground. And so therefore, the sower just sows seed. So the sower is continuously sowing. And why am I, why am I saying this? Because no matter what the result is, of the seed, whether there's a harvest or not, the sower continuously sows. Somebody right now is getting tired of sowing life into their situation. Somebody is getting tired of saying the same thing and saying, God will bless my, my marriage. God will bless my home. God will bless my health. You're not seeing any result because something is happening and you're tired of not seeing the result. But God says, as a sower, regardless of what happens in your experience, you are a sower. Continue to sow the word of God. Continue to sow the seed. See, I'm begging you right now, don't get weary in well-doing. I'm begging you right now, don't get tired of sowing. God says, I need you to sow. So, in the sower's mind, number one, the sower does what a sower is supposed to do. So, the sower continuously sows. Okay, he's, he's walking, he's sowing. Oh, this is good ground. The sower doesn't know. He's just sowing. It's just ground to him. So as we're seeing in our lives, when you have people in relationships, when you have your, your, your life and what's going on, whatever, whatever God is, is telling you to sow, 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 even in your financial situation, regardless, sow. He's saying, like, even in your, in, in your career, sow. When you come to people that need love, sow a seed of love and, and then let them know that God loves you. Even though they may not receive it, even though historically you may have had a bad experience, God says, I need you to continue to sow the seed. So here we see the sower's mind and, and the sower's activity. He continues to sow. Now, a lot of times when we hear this passage of scripture, people restrict it to talk about finance. This is not a scripture that is strictly talking about finance. Now, yes, sowing and reaping is a principle within the kingdom of God. So that means it, since it is a principle in the kingdom of God, that means that it can be applied not just on finance, but in everything in your life. This is why in the Bible it says, that shall you sow, you shall also reap. And it's a principle in your life. So it, the Bible also says that if you sow into the flesh, you will reap until the, the spirit of the flesh, which is corruption. See, it's, it, see that's not a financial type of, type of uh, scripture. It, it is whatever you sow, regardless, whatever you sow in your mind, whatever you allow to penetrate your mind, whatever thoughts, whatever, whatever uh, negativity, whatever, whatever things that you sow, if you sow negativity, you will reap negativity. If you sow positivity, you will reap. If you sow love, you shall also reap love. 
So people tend to restrict this to a financial discussion, but this is a principle. So God says, I need you to develop a sower's mindset. And the first thing is, one, understanding the identity of the sower. And at this point, God is saying, I need you to not be soil laden, but I need you to be sower minded. So when you're sower minded, you identify with the sower, but you also understand the activity of the sower. And number one, the sower does what the sower does. He sows. Then when we see the sower, no matter what the experience has been, see the Bible talks about seed falling on wayside ground. The Bible talks about seed falling on thorny ground. The Bible talks about seed falling on stony ground. And, and regardless of what that outcome is, the sower still sows the same seed. The same seed. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because as a sower, I can't pick and choose. As a sower in the kingdom of God, I can't pick and choose which seed I sow. I can't water down the seed when it comes to this person and, uh, and give a better seed when it comes to that person. What am I saying? I can't look at someone and based off of their culture, based off of their heritage, based off of their socioeconomic status, based off of their education, uh, based on all of those things, based on who they are, who I think they are, or based off of the experience that I've had with them in the past. I can't take those things and let them dictate the quality of the seed that I sow into them. So even to people that I've had run-ins with in the past that have not been favorable, when they say, hey, pastor, I need a word. And I'm, God, give me the word to sow into their particular situation, into their particular life. Give me a word of life to sow into that person because I'm a sower. I can't let my experiences dictate my level of sowing, my quality of sowing, or to stop me from sowing. Some of us are getting tired of sowing. Some of us, I, I, oftentimes, I go, and when I counsel couples, they say, well, Pastor, I've been talking to him all this time, and he just won't change. He just won't change. And I say, keep Keep, keep sowing, keep sowing love. What are you sowing? You know, what are you, what are you sowing? What are you sowing? And they're saying, well, uh, he's just, uh, he's just frustrating me. He's annoying me. He's irritating me. And I'm like, you're sowing seeds of irritation. And so therefore you're getting seed, you're getting a harvest of ir an irritated harvest. I said, sow seeds of love. Let him know that he is desired. Let him know that he is, he, he has purpose. Let him know that he's valued. Sow seeds of value and you will reap a harvest that is indicative of the seeds that you sow. But you can't stop sowing those seeds because he's ticked you off. So we have to continue sowing the same quality seed that we sowed the first time. And we have to sow it the second time and the third time. The sower never changes the seed. So we see the sower does what the sower does and the sower never changes the seed, the sower, now he continues sowing all the sower sees is ground. He just sees, he just recognizes that this is ground. He doesn't make the determination on what type of ground because the value of the seed is so valuable that it's still, regardless of the ground that it's in, it's still, there's a possibility of some type of harvest. It may not be the harvest that he wants or he's hoping for, but there's still a possibility because the potential is in the seed. So since the potential is in the seed, there's still a possibility 
in the harvest. The potential for, for your life is in the seed. The seed is the word of God. And since the word of God now cannot return void, the potential is in the seed. So regardless of what you're going through, regardless of the expectation, regardless of the experiences prior to, see the potential is in the seed. And so therefore the value of the seed makes the seed invaluable, which means that they're now the impossibilities of a harvest are now possible. So God says, I need you to continue to sow. Sometimes even in our cultural landscape right now, it seems impossible that we may recognize change. Over the protest, we've seen people, we've seen people, you know, have, 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 have sit-ins. We've seen people uh, uh, teach messages. We've seen people have discussions. We've seen people have forums. And at some point, people have said, I'm tired of doing all of this. And we've seen tons and tons of things that look like they didn't change. But it was our job, and it's still our job, to sow the seed. To sow the seed. And the seed, see here, the sower here is not moved by the emotions of his experience. The sower says, I am a sower, so I must sow. So therefore... I can't let my emotions dictate my activity. So here we see the sower does what a sower does. He sows. We see the sower never changes his seed. And the sower understands that it's just ground. He doesn't judge the ground. He just sows. He continues to sow. So here we see that the value is in the seed. The sower is persistent. He's consistent and he's faithful. People of God, God is calling us to be faithful in our charge of sowing seeds of love, of sowing seeds of compassion, of sowing seeds of warmth, of sowing seeds of, of, that reflect him, of sowing seeds of understanding. So people of God, God is saying, I need you to have a sower's mindset. So here... Another thing that we see with the sower's mind is that since he continued to sow, there was still an expectation. See, the reason why he can expect a benefit is because he knew the value of the seed, but he also identified with his role as the sower. And so since he knows his value of the seed, he says, and he knows his identity of the sower, sower, he continues to do what he's supposed to do. But notice, he knows that it's not his responsibility with, to actually make the fruit or to make the seed productive. There's already productivity in the seed. So all he has to do is now sow the seed and move out of the way and let God work the process. Many of us are struggling in our lives because we have a problem with sowing the seed and moving out the way and letting God cultivate that seed. God is saying, the seed I'm giving you, he says, I give seed to the sower. So since I give seed to the sower, I want you just to sow the seed, move out the way and let me work the process. But we get up, upset and frustrated when we don't we don't see what we want to see in the process. We don't see how we want to see it in the process. And therefore, what happens is that we then, as a sower, we stop being a sower and we go up and dig up our seed. I, I, in the business sense, we, we, there are times that when I had my own company, there were times, you know, when you start a business, they say, go and get investors. You want people to invest. And they say, you know, first start off asking friends and family and if they'll invest in your company and, and when you're starting out. But as time went on, you, you started to learn that there were types of people that you could ask. 
Not necessarily types of people with money. There are types of people because people can have money. People can have the, 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 the requirement for the investment, but they don't necessarily have the mindset to invest. There were people at times when I first started my business many, many years ago, there were times that I would go to people and because they had money, I would ask them for money, but they never had the mindset. So therefore, they would give me money and I'm looking at it as an investment, but because they didn't have an investor's mindset now to, to sow and move out of the way and let the process work for the investment and for a harvest to come, they constantly checked on the seed. They constantly checked on the investment and therefore it stopped being an investment and became more of a loan. And so there's a different type of mindset when you're accepting an investment versus a loan. So when people are giving, they don't have the mindset to let the seed work and be worked in the process, they're always checking on it because they're fearful. They're fearful that, oh, something's going to happen to my seed. Something's going to happen to the investment. Something's going to happen to the word. The word may not be true that God has given me. I'm worried because I've been in situations where things didn't happen when somebody said all things work together for the good. It didn't look like it was good. Something bad may have happened and so now they're worried. So they're constantly checking. They're constantly digging up the seed. They're constantly fearful. They're constantly worried and now your seed never takes root, but you dig it up because you never had the mindset of a sower because the sower plants the seed. It sows the seed and he walks away because God is now in charge of cultivating that seed for the harvest. And he understands that since the seed is valuable in of itself. The potential is in the seed. See, the potential is not in the soil. The potential is in the seed. So when we're so focused about being good soil, oh, let me receive this word. Let me, let me do the right things. When we're so worried about doing the right things, we, not, we, we, we can't actually look at the seed for what it is and allow the seed to work. Because what God is saying is, I've given you the seed. I give seed to the sower. The seed is the word of God. And as you take in the word of God, I want you to understand how to activate the seed. Because even though you have received it, doesn't mean that it's activated. I need you to have an activation mindset so that you can stop digging up your seed. And when you stop digging up your seed and activate it, you can now see results in your life. So when you learn how to activate the seed, when you activate that seed, you can now see transformation in your relationships, transformation in your children, transformation in your home life, transformation in your career, transformation in your health, transformation in your mental wellness, transformation in your life. He's saying, I need you to activate your seed because now, but to activate it, you have to have a sower's mindset. Many of us have not activated the seed. We've gone in and dug it up. We planted it and it was like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something just happened. I'm now fearful. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me, let me check on it. Let me dig it up. Let me, let me, let me look at it. Let me see if it's right there. See, see, God is saying, I need you to have a sower's mindset. See, the sower's mindset, he's like, this is a seed where you're supposed to expect a return. There's, this is an investment where you're supposed to expect a return. And, and he's saying, the seed is the word, the word of God that I'm giving you. So when I give you the word of God, I need you to take it. And I need you to expect a return in your life. But then as you expect a return in your life, I need you to go sow it into somebody else and ever expect a return in their life. I need you to sow it in another person. Expect a return in your life. The only thing that I'm teaching you is what God has taught me for my life. So the seed that God has given me. See, I told you even in previous messages when we... When God gives us a seed and it produces a harvest, it produces enough for us to consume for our satisfaction and for our sustenance and for our growth. And then he gives us enough, enough for us to consume. He gives us enough for us to give. 
and distribute to others and, uh, uh, and to give as a gift. And he gives us enough to where that seed will also be reap a harvest that you can now take in as income. So therefore, he says, I'm going to give you enough to meet all the need that you have. The need that you have to sustain yourself and for your growth. The need that you have for, for to, to give off to someone else because you can't choke on your own seed. And then he's saying, I'm going to give you enough so that you can now have have more flowing in so that you don't have to worry about where my next seed is coming from. I'm giving you enough seed so that you can deposit, so that you can also consume and you can also give away. So God says, but I need you to have a sower's mindset. And in the sower's mindset, he says, you need to identify with being the sower. And so he says, despite your experience, you need to keep sowing, keep sowing, keep speaking life. People of God, no matter what's going on in the world, we're going to keep speaking the vision of God. The vision of God is for his people to come together. The vision of God is for him to be reflected in our relationships. The vision of God is for people to come to a better understanding of him. The vision of God is for people to be reconciled unto him. The vision of God is for us to love. The vision of God is for us to be united. The vision of God is for him to be reflected. The vision of God is for us to glorify him. The vision of God is for him to be worshiped. The vision of God is for him to be praised no matter who you are. So we're gonna keep speaking life. The vision of God is for all of his people to, to, to be treated equally. The vision of God, we're supposed to speak it. He's given us that seed. And he says, don't grow weary in well-doing. He says, don't Change out the seed based off of your experience. And I'm saying that because sometimes people can say, you know what? We've been fighting this fight for hundreds of years. We've been fighting this fight for far too long. And now it's time to change our message. It's time for the people of God to stay on course and keep planting the same seeds. Because as I plant the same seeds in my children, I plant the same seeds into my grandchildren and to their children, then ultimately we will reap a harvest. The possibility is still there because the word of God cannot return void. void. So God, God says, okay, okay, what, how do you activate your seed? How do you activate your seed? God says, I give seed to the sower. Many of us are running on empty because we're not getting replenished with new seed. We're running on empty and not getting replenished on new seed because we don't have the sower's mindset. God said, if you are not, if you have a soil mindset and if you're going to be soil laden, I understand the initial word of God, but when I'm giving you specific word for your life, you can't be soil laden. That is an opportunity for you to be soil, so, sower minded. So now he's saying, there's no need for me to give you seed if you're not going to sow. This is in every aspect of your life. Every aspect of your life. There have been times, even in my relationship with my wife, there have been times I've gotten frustrated and, and I've just stormed off. I've just been frustrated. And the message God says is keep sowing, keep sowing, keep sowing love, keep sowing, keep sowing, keep sowing the vision, keep sowing love, keep sowing love, keep sowing compassion, keep sowing value, keep sowing. So, I'm never relieved of my duties of sowing. So God says, how do you, so you may say, God, how do I activate my seed? Now, we have to understand that God supplies seed. He gives seed to the sower, says the word, and every seed addresses a need. We've taught this before. Every seed addre addresses a need. So the way you activate the seed that God is giving you in your life 
is to understand the need of that particular seed, meaning understand the need for that word. Some of you right now may be going through a time where you need peace. God, I need peace. So therefore, the seed being the word of God, I'm going to activate this seed based off of the word of God. God, you said in your word that you are, uh, you are Jehovah Shalom. You are, you are, you are my peace. You are the God of peace. You are the Prince of Peace. God, I am activating your 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 word. I'm activating this seed based on uh, based on your word and demanding that this seed is activated based off of your word. God, I declare and demand peace in the midst of my circumstance. God, you said that I'll be comforted in you based off of your word that cannot return void. I'm activating this seed and demanding that I am comforted in you because your seed supplies the need. God, I need to be comforted. God, the people in this community need to be comforted. The people in the congregation need to be comforted. The people in this state need to be comforted. The people in this nation need need to be comforted based on the word of God, based on the seed that you have given. I am activating the seed and God, I am saying that you are the God of peace. You are a comforter. You are my banner. God, you fight the battles. So therefore, I am activating this seed and saying, God, give us peace. God, give us comfort during this time. If you're, if you're experiencing discomfort or frustration because you've lost, had a great loss in your life, God, give me comfort. This seed of comfort that you've given me. God, I'm struggling with lost identity, but you said that I am a new creation in you. So God, I now tap into that. And God, I activate the seed of new identity, renewed purpose, renewed vigor, and I demand that this seed is activated in my life. God, I declare health in my life. I declare wholeness in my life based on the word of God. And so therefore, I'm activating the seed based off of the demand that's needed. And based on the demand that's needed, the supply, God supplies the seed. And, and therefore, he supplies the seed. He says, I will supply all your need. And so therefore, the seed addresses a need. And now, as I activate that seed, because God's word cannot return void, I move in faith with my belief. So the seed is now activated in my life. And I move forward in belief and saying, I know God will comfort me during this tough time. It doesn't look like uh, I want it to look like, but God's word cannot return void. And therefore, his word is the seed, and therefore I've taken it. And, if, and once I receive it, I now can impart it and plant it in somebody else's life. So I say, God, activate the seed of comfort to my people. Activate the seed of peace that's needed in this place. Activate the seed of unity in this place with the church. Activate the seed of compassion. Activate the seed of love. Activate the seed of faith. Activate the seed, God. The seed of your word. Activate it in our, in our lives. And so, because I am a sower. God, I understand that I may not have seen the harvest that I may have wanted to. But regardless of the quantity of the harvest, I know that there's going to be a harvest. And I know that because of the quality of the seed, I know that whatever is harvested will meet the need. Because God, your seed will meet the need. So once I have a sower's mindset, I now can speak life into circumstance. I now can speak life into others. I now can speak life into my situation. God is saying, people of God, you're so focused on being soil laden, but I've already moved forward. See, the, the sower moved forward. He's just moving forward. He said, God's saying, I've already moved forward because I called you to be sowers. Where are my sowers out there? Where are the people that's going to sow seeds of joy, sow seeds of peace? Stop sowing seeds of fear. 
The reason why you're so scared is because you've been sowing seeds of fear all your life or you've allowed others to sow seeds of fear. You've taken the seed of peace, the seed of love, and you've dug it up and you've replaced it with a seed of fear. God has given you everything that you need. Everything that we need for this moment, God has already created. Because on the, the Bible says that on the seventh day he rested, he didn't create anymore. Everything that's needed for this time, for this moment, for us to stand up, for us to see change, for us to see transformation in your life and in the lives of others has been created. So God says, I've already given you what you need. Stop digging up your seed. I need you to know that it's an investment. When you speak the word over your life, it's an investment into your life. And stop treating it as a loan and you're wanting to get what you got, what you gave out. See, the problem is when I went off and I asked for investors and they gave me money, some people, they were okay. They waited for the term, for the time and the process for the invest investment to reap a harvest. Others called me within two weeks. Hey, man, I need my, I need my investment back. I'm like, brother, that's not an investment. Now you, you just let me hold on to something for a time. See, sometimes we are treating God's word like a loan and we are giving, we're, we're thinking, okay, we're, we're going to receive it, but it's not going to be useful and we have to give it back after a certain period of time. And God is saying, no, I'm giving it to you so that you can use it and so you can sow it and you can personalize it, internalize it so they can grow multiply, grow exponentially. And now it's building upon the foundation of that seed. God is saying, right now you should have a forest, you should have an orchard, you should have a vineyard of productive fruit based off of the initial seeds that I've sown into you. And you should be able to go out and plant those same seeds into somebody else. People of God, God is calling us to have a sower's mindset. He's saying, I need you to stop digging up the seed that I'm sowing into you. And I need you to let it cultivate and manifest into productive, productive fruit. And I need you to go out and plant that and sow that into someone else, regardless of your experiences. He's saying, sow love, sow compassion, sow my word into into others see many of us it's like when you have gift cards somebody gives you a hundred dollar gift card see sometimes you have to call and activate that gift card and you have to scratch off and get a special code and you have to make sure that that card is activated some of us are sitting on a storehouse of gift cards that have never been activated, but you're crying out for something that you need. And God says, you have a storehouse of gift cards, a storehouse of seeds, but because you have been consuming, 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 and you think the value is in the soil. See, the soil has certain resources, but the overall potential is in the seed. The soil cannot produce fruit apart from the seed. So therefore, you're saying that you, I need something. God, meet my need. And he's saying, I have supplied it. Activate your seed. Father God, I thank you for the people this day that are tuning into this message. I thank you for telling us that at this particular day and time, we need to have the mindset of the sower and we need to sow love. We need to sow compassion, sow investments into our life and into the lives of others. I can't wait to even go further next week in talking about the levels of sowing and how you truly reap the harvest that God wants you to reap in your life. Now, people of God, I forgot to tell you that I want you to ask questions. So if there's still any questions with this message, I know they have let you know, please, you can text your questions to 972-787-1761. 972-787-1761.
And we do have some questions. We do have some questions. Number one, is there such a thing as sowing seed on bad ground? Okay, that's a good question. Is there such a thing as sowing seed on bad ground? That is an excellent question. Okay, now, in relation to this message, there is something that would be crazy for the sower to do on in this particular passage, and that would be to sow on concrete in relation to it's there's no ground whatsoever. And so here we wouldn't, meaning when we sowing on concrete where you're just throwing it out there and not uh, you, there, there is no one to receive it, uh, or there is no one that even has an ear. But here as a sower, there is, as the sower, it was never the sower's job to determine whether the ground was good or bad. It was the sower's job to sow seed. Now, the thorny ground was still ground. The, seed, the sower still sowed. The stony ground, meaning the it was hardened underneath, the sower, uh, the sower still sowed. And wayside ground, meaning, you know, it was on the side, the sower still sowed. But as your job, the, the sower is to sow seed because the potential is in the seed. It's not your job to determine the ground. Now, I'm going to go more specifically here because here I want to address sometimes the spirit in which these questions are asked because sometimes we may try and like for instance people may say oh this ministry is good ground oh this ministry is good ground we're, we're going to do this and we're going to do that when god is telling you to sow god is just telling you to sow it's god's responsibility to reap the harvest to, to, to actually cultivate the seed so that there's a harvest that is not your responsibility so it's not your responsibility to even determine whether soil is good soil or bad soil that's not your responsibility now your responsibility is to be obedient in sowing sowing on bad ground is to sow on ground that god did not tell you to sow in Hope that answers your question okay another question if i continue to sow not worried about the result is this grace if i continue to sow not worried about the result is this grace no that's not grace that is obedience okay that is obedience Grace comes when you continue to sow, not worried about the ground that you're sowing into. Because grace here may be, uh, grace may be given and we see grace when there's a harvest regardless of the ground that it landed on. For instance, if we're not judging the ground, if we're not determining the ground that we're sowing into, and God tells us to sow, then, uh, and, 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 and something previously there the person's heart was hardened or did they did not receive grace is fruit that is productive or fruit that a harvest that is witnessed in that ground even though it wasn't initially receptive to the initial word that's not grace that's obedience when you continue to sow and not worried about the result when you continue to sow and step back from the process when you continue to sow and just expect that there's a harvest because god's word can't return void that's not grace that's obedience and faith okay does the seed change the ground it does the seed changed the ground. This is really good question because here in this particular parable, the seed is the word of God. Okay. Now, initially, someone may be, and we're talking about people when we're sowing into people. Initially, someone may be hardened. They may not receive your first attempt. They may not even receive you when, when you come, but they may receive someone else. So does the seed change the ground? over time over time the word of god can actually change someone's heart 
This is why, now we have to understand, when we're sowing seed, we are sowing seed in one and or of two ways. One by the spoken word, or one by the demonstration of the word. So therefore, as I'm sowing seed into someone's life, I'm either speaking the word of God, or I'm demonstrating the word of, word of God. Now, if the spoken word here does not necessarily, if they do not receive that, over time, the demonstration of the word may change the ground and, the, and over their experiences, they may, they may change their heart. See, this is why we see over time people, uh, uh, people changing their stance and coming to a relationship with Christ. Because just because you start off as thorny ground does not necessarily mean that you're in your life as thorny ground. So yes, over time, either the spoken word or the demonstration of the word. Now, what your responsibility is, is to speak the word and demonstrate the word. But you can't necessarily be concerned with whose seed or, or where the seed has come from. For instance, it may be me. I may be talking to my wife over and over till my face is blue, but it may be somebody else that comes along and says the exact same thing months from now. I can't be concerned with the fact that it was somebody else that she listened to. I only just have to be concerned with the fact that the seed manifested change and is producing fruit. So, yes, the seed, there's the, the word of God that is spoken and or demonstrated, and it can have an effect on people. This is why when the Bible talks about marriage, and he says that if you are with an unbeliever, stay there, stay there, because your witness, your demonstration of your faith may change their, that person's heart. So, so yes, we do see evidence of that. I hope that helps and answers your question. So that's why it's so important for the sower to continue to sow. Okay. And, you know, that, that question, it really brings me to a personal situation. I will give you, and I know I'm going longer than what I normally would, but I'm going to give you this story that took place in my life. Many people will know, like went to school in college in Iowa, but I'm from Houston, all black community in Houston. And I went to school in Iowa, predominantly white school. Now, during the course of my education, I played basketball for two years, but you know, I only played for two years. So after that, I have to, had to find ways to fund my own education. My mother at that time, uh, my mother had passed away when I was in school and I didn't have any funds. I didn't have any financial wherewithal. I didn't have any money. My family didn't come from money. So I didn't have any means to pay for my education. It got to the, so I did student loans and, and grants and scholarships. And so it got to the last, last semester and I didn't have enough money for that semester. This was my last semester. And I was taking 21 hours, 21 credit hours to finish in this time because I didn't know where the provision was coming from. Now, over time, you know, I had grown up in a black community and I had ideas of white people and the treatment of white people. But over the course of those four years being at that school, I had befriended several white students and they had befriended me. And there was one particular white student who I had a friendship with. And interestingly enough, my mother was from, and parents were from deep south Mississippi, and so they had projected certain fears on me. And those fears were how to deal in, deal in that particular environment with white people and the expectations. But my friend, her parents had experiences as well. And her parents didn't like black people. But we had this friendship, we had this bond, and it came to the last semester. And over the course of these four years, I knew that her father didn't like black people. And they were based off of his experiences that he had, negative experiences with black people. But when it came to it, over the course of those four years, we had developed a friendship. And that friendship was continuously sowing a seed. 
and I never had the income, I never had the resources to pay for my school. But you know who came to my aid and provided the money for me to pay for my last semester of school to graduate? It was the white father who didn't like black people. So when you ask, can a seed change ground? Yes, a seed can change ground. And he sowed into me. And I don't know what would have happened had he not sown into me, but if I hadn't continued to sow love, compassion, and develop a friendship and understanding with her and continue to even communicate with him. See, who, what would have happened if I had stopped sowing? So I encourage you, people of God, keep sowing. Keep sowing the word of God the spoken word of God and the demonstration of the word of God. It changes things. It changes the landscape. I thank you. For some of you, you may be asking, how do I come to a greater understanding of this identity of the sower? And you can't do that without understanding who God is and accepting God into your life. And if you hadn't accepted God and you've been living your life apart from God and you've been living in a mindset of just trying to receive all that you can. God is saying, I don't want you to be choked out because I've created you to give. I've created you to sow. I've created you for purpose. If that's you and you have not given your life to Christ, I just want you to pray with me right now and say, God, I recognize that I've lived a life apart from you. I no longer want to live a life apart from you. I want to receive you into my life by recognizing the sacrifice that you made by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins so that I can be made whole, whole and new and so that I can live a life in relationship to you and understanding who I am in you and I can be fulfilled in that life. God, I invite you into my life. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, I thank you. I welcome you. Welcome you to the family. That's a glorious thing. God is saying, now I can really deposit into you who you are and why you've been created so that you can have a life worth living and a transformed life and you can transform your communities and your environment. Some of you may be going through some things that's just, just a tough time because Although you've given your life to Christ, life is not always easy. It's not always a crystal stair. And for you, you may need people to pray with you and stand with you and to walk with you. And we'll do that. All you have to do is text the word prayer followed by your name to 972-787-1761. Text the word prayer followed by your name to 972-787-1761. We'll contact you. And others Maybe sitting and saying, hey, you know, I need a church family. I need someone that I can lean on that, can, that will empower me and walk with me through this process in, in cultivating the seed. I need someone. And pastor, I would love that person to be you. I guarantee you, if you reach out and you say that, pastor, I want that person to be you, I will reach out to you. So if you would like to be a part of the Northbridge family, all you got to do is text the word covering followed by your name to 972-787-1761. Text the word covering, followed by your name to 972-787-1761, and we will reach out to you directly. I promise I'll speak with you directly. People of God, I thank you. I thank you for this time. I thank you for listening. God is calling us to be sowers. And in that, he's having, calling us to have a sower's mindset. And in that, even if you want to, if you want to sow into Northbridge Church and into this ministry and the work that we're doing here and in the community and abroad, there are several ways you can do so. You can do so by going to our website, www.thenorthbridge.org, www.thenorthbridge.org. Or you can text. Yeah, we have that to text as well. You can text the word GIVE to 972-866-7867. Text the word GIVE to 972-866-7867. Or you can cash app us 
and our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Frisco dollar sign NBC Frisco people of God I thank you I pray that you were blessed I pray that God was speaking directly to you and I pray that you stop digging up your seed but activate the seed so that it can supply the need activate that seed according to the Word of God so that it can supply the need and watch your life the lives around you and the lives of this community be transformed. Thank you. Be blessed. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed today's message. Now, some of you may be asking yourself, how can I experience more love, more truth, more transformation, and more success in God? The first step is you must accept him into your life and give your life to him. Now, if you hadn't done that, or if you're not sure, all you have to do is repeat after me and say the simple prayer. Say, God, I recognize that I have lived a life apart from you, and I no longer want to be apart from you. And God, I recognize the sacrifice that you've made by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. And so God, I accept him as my Lord and Savior into my life. God, I welcome you into my life. Amen. If you've said those words, welcome to the fold. I am, I thank you. I'm excited for you. And I just know that your life will never be the same. Now, there's some work because now you'll now get to be connected to God and understand his purpose for your life and your identity in him. Now, others may say, hey, pastor, I've done all of that, but I just need prayer. My life right now is a little uneasy and I just need someone to stand with me in prayer. Now, if that's you, we will stand with you in prayer. All you have to do is text the word prayer, followed by your name to 972-787-1761. Text the word prayer, followed by your name to 972-787-1761, and we will reach out to you directly and pray with you. Now, others, you may say, hey, pastor, I need someone to stand with me and empower me and coach me along this journey. And that's what we're here for. That's exactly what a pastor is here for, to shepherd you along the process. And if you say, Pastor, I want you and Northbridge Church to be that family for me. We welcome you. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be here in Frisco, Texas, or you can be on the other side of the country. It doesn't matter where you are. All you have to do is text the word covering, followed by your name to 972-787. 1761. That's 972-787-1761. And we will walk that journey with you. I'm excited for you. Welcome to the fold. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. And I am so excited and I can't wait to see what God has in store for you. Be blessed.